Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to this week's author reading and writing tips. I'm very excited. This week I have author Felicia Mihali. Felicia is the author of Pineapple Kisses and Eliquet, and there will be a link down below. So if you missed our behind the book interview, you can find out the stories behind her book. Welcome, Felicia. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, you for the opportunity. You are most welcome. Now, before I invite you to read, I was wondering, can you please share with our viewers what piece of advice would you have for new authors? The most important thing is to write about things that you know very well. Be true, uh, be sincere, and be honest. With with the re with yourself and the readers, <laughs> and that's one of the things that I really enjoyed in reading your your book Pineapple Kisses and Eloquet because you know you went up north, you were a teacher, and that really translated beautifully in your novel because I felt like I was there with you and in the classroom. And could you share an excerpt today from your novel with us? Yeah, with great pleasure. Thank so you. So I, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna uh, read the um, the first two pages from the chapter one, places and people. Fantastic. One day, I happened upon a teaching position in Ikawi, the capital of Nunavut. The job description didn't give much detail about the task, except that l'aurore boreal was l'école francophone la plus nordique au monde. Was this geographical achievement so important as to marry the emphasis? Was it so extraordinary to imagine oneself working in a place that had no other counterpart beyond the Arctic Circle? When I analyzed the job description again, the doubts that had bubbled the day before vanished, and the posting now lured me with all the power of a sea song. It had to be an exceptional achievement to be the most northerly francophone outpost in the world. No French conjugaison anywhere else in the Arctic. Time for this history teacher to put the Crusaders mythology and the Middle Ages charm aside and move forward to the Becherelle. Moving away is not about looking for new places but seeking new people. As you set out to travel, family and friends might guess that you are looking for better company. When better is not possible, less boring would be an improvement. Boredom was killing me in the school where I had been teaching history for the last six years. It was a published public high school, like many others, where the concept of teaching as a vocation was fading away, corroded by the younger generation's cynicism. Withdrawal from the real world is at the core of that generation's woes, but we are no better than them. The most frustrating thing for me as a teacher was the gloomy mood of my students. Young people are somber driven by a secret desire to get adults on the wrong foot and accuse them of something, usually of being mean or ill-intentioned. Mm -hmm. Theirs is a generation that doesn't take no for an answer, while at 34 I felt already too old to say yes very often. This job blew a kind of excitement into my life. The unknown has attracted people to the art for centuries. Yet geographical exploration had never been my interest. Unlike Martin Frobisher, the first white man to officially set foot on Baffin Island, I knew from the beginning that I would what I would find in Iqaluit. When you are a lonely person, solitude follows you everywhere. Yet, the first thing that struck me when I arrived was the geographical misunderstanding I had on my own country. The most shocking was the unexpected odor of putrid algae and salt water that hit me when I got off the plane on September 4th. 
Iqaluit is set on the shore of Baffin Island in a small inlet of Fabisha Bay. Those names had been linked in my mind with eternally frozen land. How could I associate the smell of the ocean, the drizzle of rain, and the sticky fog with the Canadian Ar Arctic archipelago? Then it was the dust staining the land a dark brown. The few passers-by I saw on my way from the airport seemed to have never polished or washed their boots. I would soon figure out this was one of the things people rarely do up north, as rarely as putting makeup on one's cold red face or washing one's oily hair, always covered by woolen cuffs. In only two days, my shoes were to be coated with as many layers of dust as the roads I was to take across the season. Someone once wrote that brown was the least valued color in the Western culture. In paintings, brown is used mainly to depict the land, the least striking detail in a landscape. In Iqaluit, brown was by far the most prominent color at this time of year. It could be found in everything from the hills shores, houses, roads, and blackberry bushes, to the fishing boats, seal tails, and ships. Everything here was a mixture of brown and gray, except for when a hunter's gaudy parka disrupted the dull hues of the landscape. That's it. Oh, thank you, Felicia Mihali. Oh, I could listen to you read all day. <laughs> so much <laughs> so, and how do i say thank you in romanian mulțumesc mulțumesc <laughs> yes you're, you're being Good. very kind and thank you thank you so much for coming today being such a great guest really enjoyed listening to you read and learning the stories behind your books I thank will... you for being such great host, uh, Crystal. Oh, thank, thank you very much. My pleasure. Hopefully I'll be able to talk next week when I do this again. <laughs> Links down below for our viewers so you can purchase a copy of uh, Pineapple Kisses and Ikalawit. It is a great book and a great journey up to the north. Thank you so much. Thank you, Crystal. Bye, everyone. Bye.